Hi, I'm Jonathan M0JSX, and it is the Tokyo Ham Fair 2024 this weekend. Icom, we know, are announcing something. It's called the X60 currently. Who knows what it'll actually be called this time tomorrow, as I record this at about half past four on Friday. But Yesu have pit them to the punch. Is that even a phrase? Who knows? Going to roll with it uh, by releasing or announcing a new portable HF, VHF, UHF radio, SDR-based radio, which they are calling the FTX-1F. They know how to name things, don't they? Uh, on the face of it, this looks very much like Yesu's answer to ICOM's IC705, which of course has been around for a number of years now. Uh, the specs you need to know off the bat, here they are. So it is a six watt radio uh, when using the internal battery pack, which is a 5670 milliamp hour lithium ion battery pack, or 10 watts when plugged in to an external DC power supply. Uh, they are saying on that internal battery, you should get nine hours of standalone operating time on the HF bands with SSB and eight hours operating time on the VHF UHF bands uh, based upon using FM on a 6642 duty cycle. I'm not entirely sure what that means, to be honest with you, but hey ho, never mind. Um, it will cover HF 6, 2 and 70. They're calling an all mode field transceiver. Uh, some preliminary information that we have. We know it will support SSB, CW, AM, FM, and C4 FM. It has, it's fully SDR, as well as having the 3D spectrum scope that we've seen from Yesu uh, in the past, things like the uh, 101, the DX10, the 710, for instance, uh, on a 4.3 inch high resolution, full color touch display panel. Uh, I have done a quick measure that is ever so slightly bigger than the screen found on the IC705 and the IC7300. I suspect it's probably the same size as 710. I haven't checked that. It has two independent receiver circuits providing true simultaneous dual band operation, uh, whether in the same band or in different bands. So it says, for example, SSB communication on HF bands simultaneously with C4 FM digital communication on a VHF or UHF band. What it is interesting though, reading the fine print here, is it's giving examples. It's saying you could do HF plus, a, plus VHF, HF plus UHF, two VHF channels, two UHF channels, or a VHF and a UHF channels. What it doesn't appear you can do is have, or be monitoring two HF bands at the same time. According to what it says here, if you read it on face value, it, it doesn't look like you'd be able to have one receiver on 40 meters, for instance, and one receiver on 20 meters, or in fact, be able to do anything like diversity receive with two antennas. No information in terms of antenna sockets at all. Uh, it does have two loudspeakers uh, ensuring clear and powerful audio output. There is an, going to be an optional antenna tuner, uh, which can attach to the rear of the transceiver with the 5670 milliamp hour high capacity lithium ion battery. And there's also going to be an optional cooling fan, which you yes, say is necessary for comfortable FT8 operation and can also be combined with the antenna tuner. So you can have, the way I'm reading that is you can have the battery fixed, uh, the antenna tuner and this cooling fan as well, all at the same time. Uh, RF front end with low noise uh, reference oscillator same thing we've seen before from Yesu. Uh, effective QRM rejection offered by the high-speed 32-bit IFDSP, which again, we've seen that before on something like the 710. Obviously it has C4 FM, so it is compatible with Wires X. It has the uh, primary memory group uh, function, which can register and monitor up to five frequencies uh, simultaneously. That's the same as we see on something like the FTM 500. There is a memory auto grouping, uh, so your channels can be categorized into their relative band groups. So you can have HF channels, VHF, UHF, airband, and others. And there's going to be a USB port supporting CAT operation, audio input and output, and TX control. And it's going to be available in early 2025. That's the details we have. Um, we don't have any idea about price at the moment. If Yesu are aiming this to be a competitor to the 705, then 
we can probably expect a similar price to a 705, probably in that sort of 12 to 1500 pound mark. That's me speculating there. I don't know. I have not, I have no more information than than what is out there on the internet. And uh, uh, my thanks to Martin Inch and Sons for giving me the heads up that it was on their website. Uh, so most dealers in the UK are now offering a, uh, a deposit system. So if you're looking at this radio and you think I must have one, I want one of the first to come into the country. Uh, Martin Inch and Sons, for instance, are offering a fifty pound deposit system in order to reserve your one when they come into stock next year. Now, I am absolutely convinced that by the time that this video is uploaded, to be honest, and certainly by the other side of the weekend, we will know far more about this radio because by that point, people would have seen it at the Tokyo Ham Fair. And particularly what I'm interested to see is the back panel because we haven't seen that yet. We've only got a front picture, which looks great, but interesting what the back panel actually looks like. Uh, I want to know what your thoughts are. Does this look like the radio for you? I have to say, when I first saw it, I thought, oh, brilliant, they've done a, an 857 replacement. It wasn't until I started reading the, uh, the, the, the sort of small print. Oh, it's, it's an 818 replacement, which is great. I mean, an 818, you know, hasn't been in production now for a couple of years. So it's nice that Yesu have addressed their portable offering. Uh, arguably, it's possibly three years too late compared to the, the 705 but it does do more than a 705, you know, certainly being able to have two receivers, having that uh, uh, larger battery, that's much larger than the one on the on the 705. So yeah, definite advantages with this new uh, FTX1F, uh, but interesting to know what your thoughts are on it, please leave them in a comment down below. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, if you've liked this video, there's a button specifically for that. Uh, if you haven't, there's another button that seems to work just fine too. And if you haven't already done so, please do click on that subscribe button as it really does help me out. There's another video coming up over here that the algorithm thinks that you might like next. Until next time, 73. Bye-bye.